take on on what I think, you know, as a um, as a as a pastor, as a a believer, as someone that loves God, you know, um, my take on this thing, I believe, is is that God, God is wanting us to. There's something we need to do it by the word by the way of love. I, I really believe it's 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 about love. If you if you you know from what I've seen in the in the scriptures and. I'm going into Ecclesiastes 9 just so y'all can be ready. But what I have seen by way of, you know, how God operates with things, and even when you look back to the biblical, you know, times of Noah them, what ended up happening was what brought the destruction was the fact that they they wouldn't quit. You know, they were steady doing things in in, in unrighteous. Let's, let's just put that word on it. Unrighteous, you know. There was so much unrighteousness that was going on that it literally caused uh, a judgment to come upon upon the earth. And you think about when um when the Lord sent the plagues. The plagues was due to you know the fact of him sending a word of instruction, you know, uh, to unto Pharaoh to say, hey, let the people, let the people go. Okay, you're not going to let them go? Well, then these things right here are going to happen. So I really believe, and I don't, I don't think that there's anything wrong with us exploring the fact to see that could this be because there's something about, you know, there's something by way of love that we need to fix. If, um, if you're in, you know, think about yourself, if you're in tremendous amount of pain, you know, you're sick or whatever the case may be, and you just want, you know, and they say, well, I don't know what's going on with you, you know what I'm saying, we we don't, it's no, we, we can try this or we can try that. Nine times out of ten, you're going to be willing to try it because of the simple fact you're looking for that breakthrough, you're looking for whatever that answer is, you know. You you want that. So what is the harm in us trying it? What is the harm in us, you know, saying that, hey, listen, what the world needs is love. That's what we've been crying. That's what we've been screaming. That's what the world needs. So what's wrong with us, you know, saying we need to love more? We 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 have um I don't think that we really understand forgiveness um at the capacity that we should. I think that's a, a hindrance for us. This is these are my takes on on what I believe as a as a as a pastor, as an intercessor. These are the things that I am praying about. You know, these are the things that I am actually praying about. I believe that we do not understand forgiveness as we should. We think that, you know, because if I start back talking to you after something has happened that that means I've forgiven you, no, it doesn't. We um we think that if I just ignore it, that that means that I've forgiven it. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. And so wherever there is a struggle with unforgiveness, there's going to be a struggle with love. And so I really believe that that is a, a, a big major part of things because the world breathes hurt. You know, I don't know whether y'all are aware or, pay, or paid attention to this or not, but the world breathes hurt. And when I say it breathes hurt, what I mean is John 16, 33 says, in this life, you're going to have tribulations. So there's going to be some challenging things. I'm going to Ecclesiastes chapter 9. If you want to go ahead and prepare yourself to go there. There's going to be some challenging things, he says. There's going to be some times when you're hurt. There's going to be some times when you're going to cause hurt. So because of that, because there's going to be these things, then there's going to be something that we have to all deal with called forgiveness. So being that that is what's going to happen and that is so, then that is a vital part of us, of our life, of our makeup. I believe, I, I really believe I'm wholeheartedly sold if you ask me, the things that I am sold on, I am sold on winning in life. That's one. I'm going to talk big. I'm going to talk big about winning in life because I, I really believe we need to win in life. But how do we win in life? 
I believe forgiveness is a major vital part of winning in life. I do. I believe it is. I believe obedience is a vital part of us winning in life. I believe that giving is a vital part of us winning in life. I believe that healing is a vital part of us winning in life. But in these areas, among a few more that I just called out, are things that I look at the world and I see us as a people having some of the greatest struggles with. We have some of the greatest struggles with. Literally have seen people that have considered to be good-hearted people, but deep down inside, there is some type of root of unforgiveness. There is something that has happened that has brought about a pain that has not been released. So I believe that the Lord is reaching to the world in order to bring us to a place where there is forgiveness. Because when there is forgiveness, there is healing. If you look at what Jesus did when the situation came about for him to go to the cross, one of the things he said that was so vital, he said, Father, forgive them. See, forgive them. It's like in order for what I've got to do to be effective, I've got to have forgiveness. So, Father, forgive them, he says, for they know not what they do. Now, that is the hardest and can be one of the hardest things to do. And in the capacity of there's two parts in that. He said, forgive them. That is, that, that's, you know, that's a situation there. But then he turns and says, for they know not what they do. Well, in our minds, we have been conditioned to think that everybody knows what they're doing when they do something. And we, that's just what, well, you a lie. You know what you were doing. You know what you were doing. That is what we think. So it is hard for us as people to believe that there is, that people cannot know what they're doing. But there is a such thing as being under an element of influence. That's a whole nother thing when I, you know, I have to teach about deliverance to help y'all with that. But there is a whole different thing about being under the, in, being under the influence. So I'll tell you this part to help you understand what it means to be under the influence. To be under the influence means just what it means when we think about someone drunk. That means that they are impaired. That means that something else has taken over. Whether that nature is there or not. Hey, sister, whether that nature is there or not, or that desire to do that is there or not, there still had to be something to push them to act out in that or to manifest in that. So that is under the influence. So there is a such thing as being under the influence of some demonic spirit that will cause a behavior to come about. So Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not or they are not aware of what it is that they're doing. They, they, it's, they're they not appreciative, so to speak. That That's a whole nother realm of it too. Is they're not, they're not aware. They, they cannot see. They, they're, they're not focused in enough. So they're not appreciative of what has been, what has been placed in their midst. So forgive them for they know not what they do. Then you go into the book of Acts and it says, had they, if they had a known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And so then now there is this element again of forgiveness. And I believe that that is a major thing of what is going on as to reason, as the reason why. How about if we was all to literally just examine ourselves, just me taking their feet, me not worrying about anybody else me not caring you know and in about somebody else's business but me just caring about myself and just took inventory of myself and really looked at I'm 46 years old and is it 46 or 47 I don't forget I, I think I'm 46 y'all and really just looked at me and said okay take inventory of your life and where you have been in the 46 years just take inventory of that and look at everything that has happened to you and really see have you healed from that okay so you were born february 1st 1975 okay 
All right. So in that time of span, what are some things that you know that has happened to you? Well, you do realize that when you were five years old, you were found up by your mom's boyfriend. Did you heal from that? Did you heal from that? And if, if, if so, how do you know you heal from that, Delphine? What did you do in order for healing to come about from that? Okay, or did you just not pay that any attention because that happened to you as a child and then you grew up into an adult, so you just went on with your life? Did you really take time to think about what that done to you? How did that make you feel? What did that bring about? So have you really healed from that? Did you really forgive him for that because you were aware of who he was and the fact that he did that so did you really forgive mm, okay then travel a little bit more now this is me if we would just take inventory i believe of our lives and look at things that has happened there are some of you that had you know uh people to to take advantage of you there are some of you that uh were in love but love was not reciprocated back to you that caused pain to you there were some of you that have been betrayed there are some of you that your parents did not take care of you someone else had to raise you have you just taken time to really go back into your life and see have you really healed from that have you just really checked to see did you really get free from that because a lot of times we'll think that we're free from things but really all we've done is just push that stuff over in a corner and we have not dealt with it because there are very few things that we were taught to deal with we were always taught girl just shut up and go on don't you sit there crying about that you just got to keep moving on you just got to keep going and yes that is true in a certain essence but you also have to move on in freedom. That's what we need to be taught, how to move on in freedom. We have not been taught how to move on, Delphine. You're going to do this this morning. I'm going to do every bit of it, y'all. We have not been taught to move on in freedom. We've been taught to move on or to pretend as though we have moved on, but we haven't been taught to move on in freedom. I am so serious this morning. How many of you have literally taken the time to just look back over what you have gone through, have literally just taken the time and not ran from your past. You haven't ran from what has happened. You haven't just brushed it under the rug, threw it in the corner, put it over in the closet, but you have really literally dealt with that situation. You've literally allowed yourself to go visit that place to say, give me myself back from this right here. Give me my peace back. You're not having that anymore. I'm not going to live isolated. I'm not going to live as though everybody is going to hurt me because of what this right here did. How many of you have literally gone and allowed yourself to heal. I believe, now listen, this is, uh, look, check this out. I really believe this is me. This is what I have been praying. I'm telling y'all, I'm letting y'all in my personal world, my private world of what I have been spending time with God as it relates to believing because I believe that that is a lot of what is going on. When you have not healed from things, when you have not released things, then it causes sickness to come upon you. It causes things to happen when there is a bitterness. The Bible talks about bitterness uh, getting inside of the bones, uh, which literally means that it has been studies that have been shown that people that have severe arthritis, uh, that, there have, that there have been instances that has happened in their life that has caused them to be bitter about some things, and it literally gets into the bone, and we understand also that Fear paralyzes, and because fear paralyzes or fear puts you in a grip as to where you cannot move, then that means that you're not free. So literally, I believe that that is a lot of what's going on with us, that that is a lot of what's happening with us as a people. And that is the reason why they are literally trying to find avenues of how to remove certain things, how healing for this and healing for that. Well, a lot of it is because we are not healed as individuals. We are not healed as individuals. We are yet holding on to some things. We are yet 
Oh, God, we are yet to call, Father, help me this morning. We are yet caught up in the midst still of some things that has happened. We haven't just released it. We haven't just really let it go. Some of, some of us are under the impression that if we let it go, that means that we're weak. If we let it go, then that means that I'm saying that it's okay what they did. 